Hyosbe Ichibe, the high priest in the Bleach universe where there are no gods besides Soripas, is the singular being that oversees all of existence. What is the true power of the one who has pulled the strings behind history? To understand this, we must first understand how things came to be. When the world was not what it is today, the cycle of souls still stagnant, a time where entire eons would pass without a hint of change. For a reason that is still unknown to this day, hollows would begin eating humans, a small problem before long progressing to a point where, if something wasn't done soon, a singular hollow could grow large enough to ensnare the entire world. But as if the cosmos itself begged to differ, one entity, neither a devil nor a god, a saviour of sorts, appeared to vanquish the man-eating hollows, progressed a stagnant yet chaotic world, and then came five beings with powers much like Ichibes, either in awe or disgust to use this nigh omnipotent power to further the stagnant world by splitting it into three great realms of existence. The material world, a realm identical in nature to our universe with planets, celestial bodies and systems like galaxies, sharing all of our greatest historical figures and events, the concept of the universe even down to the precise languages, human experiences and the same geography of our very earth. The second realm, the soul society being of its own spiritual composition. It's explained that all things that sustain their form in the Gargantua must be within a dimension preventing the two realms from ever coming into contact. The spatially and temporally disconnected Kampaku world, the soul society, separated by the Dangai. Now, these realms would inherently be separate space times as the pipeline which is wrapped around by layers upon layers of time is in itself disconnected from space and time of each realm and is also confirmed when the crew is chased by the cleaner, who also controls space and time by the way, through the precipice world. It was a major contributor to Rescue and Rukia that they accidentally gained time by shifting from their original temporal axis, the world to the livings onto an earlier point in the soul society, the home of Shinigami. Last of all, a sand paradise from an ethereal hollow known as Hueco Mundo, and it exists somewhere between the two realms. Of all things that exist, spanning the million year long history of these realms, it is Ichibe who named them all. In this series, all power dwells in names. Every power from every race, including Kidos that can stop time and jump through space, to the abilities of Fullbringers, hybrids like Ichigo, and every Zanpak Toe in existence. Not only can Ichibe see their names and is aware of them at all times, like the Soul God of to his creations. Ichibe sees their true power by gazing at them just once and has access to the very concept of names themselves. With a single stroke of his brush, Ichibe can conceptually seal spaces within dimensions, making them utterly inaccessible unless the seal was broken and can slice the name of anything that makes contact with his brush. If for example, he were to cut a name in half, it would mean that its power completely halves. And when I say everything, I mean everything halves, from speed to energy output to ability. Naturally, as someone who has bestowed and observed the evolution of power for a million years, he is both skilled at manipulating and revoking it. The primordial monk is a master of all arts, a monster able to use secret kido such as teppusatsu, an ability capable of erasing the impregnable defenses of the unhaban blood vein, the highest level application of the greatest Quincy defense, a technique used by the grandfather of the Quincy, Yu Habaha. Ichibe is so strong that he can afford to be carefree and deliberately hold back against this very Yuha. The same Yuha who made quick work of beings like Yamamoto who can erase the soul society's planet just by existing. Unbothered by the power of a monster Aizen, even if he were to have defeated Mugetsu Ichigo. The same Ichigo with the power to blow away naturally occurring dimensions like the Kyogoku which houses a planet and a main sequence style within it. A character so ridiculously strong that even when other members of the Zero Division just by exercising even a fraction of their oak infused power can make the three great realms tremble? These realms housing innumerable celestial bodies by the way, like a dogwood to a chew toy, despite still being overthrown by Yuha's inferiors, Uryu and Jugram, he at no point for even a second felt like he'd lose. I don't think you guys understand just how mindlessly overpowered you have to be. To point to perspective, even if you wanted to say that the three realms weren't split from an original universe equal to our own, despite the ridiculous amount of evidence, these realms are shown to obey the same physical law Laws, and seeing as light is not transcendent above space and time, thereby existing within the observational boundary of each realm, along with the particle compositional differences, with objects outside of dimensions being incapable of existing outside in the Garganta as I explained earlier, the stars would inherently have to be contained within these realms. Not to mention, these realms are shown when Yuha is returning them to what they once were during his battle with Ichigo. For those of you who don't know, these end of chapter shots are often how Kubo shows events that literally take place within the manga and the novels confirm this. These things clearly indicate that the realms house galaxies and celestial bodies. Now things get even more ridiculous when you consider that these same realms have astrology.
The reason that the existence of astrology is so insane is because astrology's parameters aren't based off of physical space. They're contingent upon how much of the celestial sphere surrounding Earth the constellations occupy. In other words, anything, no matter how many billions of light years away, if its existence lies within that region of the celestial sphere, it's considered part of that star sign. Hence, the size of the star signs is calculated in terms of solid angles. By using steridians, we get a size over 20% that of the observable universe. These realms, rather than being thirds, would at least be close to fifths of our universe. We get an absurd size either way. Plugging in the frequency of perturbations, the modal mass of the sum of the dimensions, we still get a feat of multi-galaxy level on the low end. Senju Maru as well as any other member of the Zero Division can output this level of energy just by existing in their Bankai. And yet, Ishibe thought even if such a power were to be overcome, as long as he was there, victory is guaranteed. This is the same guy that took away the Almighty to begin with. Besides his insane strength, the monk is so fast that he can eclipse monsters like a full ring Ichigo who far surpasses his fake Karakurita and hollow form before getting massively stronger than his FTL plus form. Ichibe is so fast that against the Yuha, who was unfazed by this very full ring Ichigo, could cast down his Oswalian light, striking his children that he intended to sacrifice for his royal guard in 3 seconds. This feat is so impressive because it is a distance that took Ichigo simply falling downwards in frictionless oaken clothing 9 hours and 15 minutes to traverse. Keep in mind, Ichigo has no idea what's going on down there, hence why he didn't know that the battle had already been gun until Ichibe told him. Nevertheless, the distance he'd need to travel is absurd. Factoring in the consistent gravity between 72 layers, the free fall distance would have to be at a low ball over 5.4 billion meters. A distance so large that Superman would have to fly around the earth 134.6 times to cover. Just above 2% of the distance between the earth and the sun. You all can hit a being and traverse double that distance at speed close to 12 times the speed of light. But you see, it only gets more insane when you realize that this is not only low balled seeing as Ichigo goes propelling himself downwards as well as he heads down towards the ground. But also, in the All But Black book written by Kubo, it's revealed that Aizen refers to that heaven, which is what the Soul King Palace is known as, as existing above the sky and the stars. With the Soul Society's foremost planet having at least a main sequence star between the Serite and the Dimension, with it being a low ball as this dimension is shown to house its own star, Yuha's Australian will be travelling at several hundreds of times the speed of light. And still, it's not enough to phase the Manako Osho. Ijibe only took away half his power. Can you imagine being so ridiculously strong that you took away half the power of your enemy so that he has an excuse if he gets his ass whooped? Man, this shit fake. It's fake. But you know, Yuha doesn't learn his lesson and still defies him. Those who recklessly call the name of the priest have their voices stripped from them. But as someone who resists the law and conceptual manipulation, reclaiming his name, voice, and power, going so far as to attempt to take the body and power of the priest. But of course, power nullification and power steal are futile against the one who has named it all. With Ichibei crushing the layers upon layers of power null like glass, it is only now that Ichibei is angered, deciding at last to kill the Quincy King. Painted black, Ichimonji. A stupidly massively faster than light Yuha. In a split second, his perception blitz by a flash of ink released by Ichibe as he hops between his blade and brush. It splashes a single koi fish outside the serite. This casual feat, equivalent to traveling a solar system in a second, 500 times the speed of light. Speed has largely lost meaning in the eyes of the Manako Osho. But still, what is the true power of the one who has named it all when he finally decides his enemy is worth killing? Ichimonji not only takes away entire letters from names, and with it, the power that the name holds, but can also blow out the entire name. Yuha's sword is touched by the ink, and as he tries to call its name, it's to no avail. If all power dwells in names, then that which is nameless has no power. Can something without a name kill Ichibe? Is that a trick question? Still, Yuha outsteps his bounds, using Sankt Altar to try and steal Ichibe's power. However, it is once again to no avail. Or was it? Osho's power is taken, but the power that's taken will never belong to the Quincy King, because Ichibe's power is black itself. Upon releasing Ichimonji, all black, from Shinigami to Quincy, the living or the dead, becomes his. The monk demonstrates what truly makes him fierce beyond his transcendental soul reaper abilities, stripping Yuha, or should I say, the man that used to be called Yuha, of his name. He then goes on to brandish him with a new name, Shinuchi Shirafude Ichimonji. The first evolves Anpakuto before the concept of Bankai even existed in the universe. 
to carve a new name on anything covered in its ink. Kuroari, a god amongst men, is now left with the power speed of an ant. Can you imagine a god amongst men, the king of Quincy, left with the power speed of an ant? The gap between him and the primordial priest is too large to comprehend, crushed underfoot and squashed like the insect he is. Ichibei is so nonsensically overpowered that it took a literal all-knowing and all-powerful ability brought about by a 999-year-old prayer for the shadow of defeat to reflect on his eyes. The Almighty gives Yuha the ability to see the future, make all powers that he knows come to his side unable to do harm nor kill him, and still Ichibei has one final trump card. Unlike the abilities that are of this world which rely on and can be negated by spiritual pressure, the primordial being summons the black from Yuha, beginning a prayer unlike any you've heard before. Gloom of dusk, darkness of eternity come to me, show your face and drink, drink and your life will fly away from you, flower bloom even on the path to the afterlife. This prayer erecting a tombstone by sacrificing 100 nights from 100 years in the soul society's future, allowing him to cast his enemy into a state of absolute conceptual erasure. Hutentai Satsuryo, plunging them into a black hell and removing them from the cycle of reincarnation entirely. Now although he may not be stronger than the son of the one who transcended everything, if one thing's for sure, Ichibei is inexplicably strong. I hope you enjoyed, be sure to drop a like, subscribe, comment on anything you want to see. I know a lot of you guys are new from the Hajime no Ippo video which for whatever reason blew up but be on the lookout for a Takamura video, of course the Aizen one, I haven't forgotten. With that being said, the road to 5k now begins and with that, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.